Hey cats, it's Ed, Recovery Bud here. Today I've got a review of a more maximally cushioned shoe. Puma were kind enough to fire over a pair of these for me to try out, and I've got to say I was surprised in almost every aspect. Let's get to my initial review of the Puma Magnify Nitro. Thanks for joining me back on Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already guys, please hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. And it helps the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like. Danke schön. Weight stats up on the screen for you right now. I have these in a UK size 11, US size 12, and apparently we have a whopping 38 millimeters of stack height here. So it's close to the next percent or the alpha fly. Though this is a max cushion shoe, so it's kind of what you'd expect, right? I believe there's a couple of versions of this shoe. This one comes in at around about 120 Earth credits, but there is a slightly cheaper one at 110. Aren't too many maximally cushioned shoes knocking around at that price range, so could be interesting. We'll kick the review off with the upper first. So comfortable here, nice and form fitting. I can see this shoe being a long run specialist. It's got that sort of level of plushness on top of the foot from that very well padded tongue. With a long run shoe, you want a little extra padding here and there just to increase the comfort. I do find that the shoe runs a tad long. Again, that could be beneficial for a long run purpose. Your foot starts to swell up over so long and a shoe that felt ideal for a little while suddenly begins to feel constrictive. What I do like about the upper is the quite flexible and light toe box, although it is a little more shallow than some other models. Padded pillow-like plushness here in the heel. And it's quite a considerable counter back here, so if that's something you require, it's there. There are sort of two layers to the upper off the shoe. There's some considerable gusseting there, and you've got this sort of more plasticky outer layer. Aside from that, there's not a huge amount else going on with the upper. They've decided to keep things quite minimal. Some reflective pieces on the eye stays and down on the front of the tongue. It looks like Puma have minimized things in the upper so they can add a little extra weight in other areas of the shoe. It's kind of the opposite, really, of the Invincible run there, where you had just the midsole and there was lots of it. And then they seem to put padding in areas that just didn't really need it. That made the Invincible run quite a confusing maximally cushioned shoe for me. Here it's plush, but with some thought. I didn't find any issues trying to get a good lockdown in the shoe, no heel slipping. I did find a few reviewers complained about the Deviate Nitro heel slip issue, but then also complained about this one that there was just too much to it. Mm. What do you want? Ample tongue padding here, but I did find it quite difficult to do a runner's knot with the supplied laces. Just a little bit too short. I think for the purpose, the upper works incredibly well. I think reviewers expecting wafer thin material, you know, carbon spatulas and all that razzmatazz. You know, you've got stuff like this to utilize for those longer runs where you're not so worried about pace. No major issues here in the upper. A similar fit to me as per the Velocity Nitro from Puma. I think if you were to grab this shoe, go for the size that you had in the Velocity and you'll probably be just fine. I'm gonna give it a 2.6 for upper after my initial runs. Only reduced a little bit due to those laces, which just are too short. I tend to use a runner's knot quite often and can't do it with this one. My only other downer on the upper is the fact that in the rain it's got very wet and it's taken some time to dry. It does add a little bit of extra weight to the shoe. Midsole now. So we've got a Nitro and EVA combo here. A thinner layer of EVA on the bottom and then a slightly thicker nitro foam on the top. A sandwich of squash, you could say. I wouldn't expect black hole-like foot-eating compression, though. It's smooth with some impact protection there, but it's far from clunky at all. Yes, gallons of energy return is that big buzzword, isn't it, that everyone keeps using. But I think most people, for a longer run, will need their shoe to just protect them, really, from the pounding of the pavement. If you're doing some sort of recovery effort, then you just want it to be nice and smooth. So tested these out over about 12 miles, paces between about eight minutes 30 per mile, down to about seven minutes per mile. Threw in a few bursts there, just see what the shoe feels like at a higher pace. It's certainly not one I'd reach for to do intervals. Best suited really for cruising pace, nice steady kind of efforts. Or if you just want to enjoy the surroundings, take in the scenery. Absolutely not saying I'd reach for for out and out pace, but Puma have got other models for that, haven't they? The Liberate Nitro, or you can throw on the Deviate Nitro Elite and really burn it up. The EVA layer here feels a little bit like that 
I found in the Ultra Ride from Puma that I reviewed last year. It does give some stability to the wearer, a little bit like a maximized version of the Pegasus Turbo. Though don't expect the light weight of that shoe, that simply isn't what this is about. It's got that more compressive light layer on top and then that more rubbery solid sort of layer underneath. Perhaps imagine a less rigid deviate nitro, less of a race or tempo feel to the midsole and the upper. Perhaps not a shoe for everybody, but I feel that the midsole fits a specific use case this time around. Whereas underfoot stability is paramount, but you need protection for those longer and slower efforts. I'm going to give this a 2.6 out of 3 after my initial runs for the midsole, reduced a little bit by that more limited and focused use case. Not the most versatile by any stretch, but vastly more sensible and crafted than the throw lots of zoom X at it Nike approach. It does make you wonder what a full length nitro midsole would be like on a Puma shoe. I guess we had that in the Liberate. So yeah, this is like two Liberate stacked together. Outsole now. It's the same color as my shirt. Puma grip, it's great. Full stop. Lots of grip here with this rubbery solution. It's assured and a full length application is given here. Yes, it's gonna add weight, there is quite a lot of depth here. Yes, it could have been reduced a little bit due to having that tougher EVA layer just behind it. That said, EVA isn't meant to be an outsole material, is it? I always complain about that, the exposed EVA, you know, it's wearing down too quickly. So yeah, I think you can get loads and loads of durability from this shoe. It's not gonna disappear anytime soon, is it? A good, well-designed rubber outsole is always gonna improve the longevity of any model. Up to yesterday, I'd used this shoe in mainly dry conditions and it was absolutely fine. I did go out and got absolutely saturated yesterday, only four miles, but I was probably the wettest I've ever been. And these shoes did take on a little bit of weight, but they performed fantastically in wet weather. So there's nothing that Puma Grip can't handle. When the going gets tough, you basically got Billy Ocean here on the outsole. It's just as good as the stuff on the Liberate, the Deviate, the Velocity. So I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3 for outsole. I don't think it's going anywhere. I just wish they'd used a slightly less generous application here. Value now. So value-wise, this Max Cushion offering from Puma is vastly cheaper and better than the New Balance 1080 V11. Loads more comfortable and cheaper than the Invincible Run, certainly at retail price anyway. Less clog-like than the Clifton. More stable than the Symmetros. It just feels a little bit more well put together as well. The quality of the shoe is just a little higher. I think this presents a great value Max Cushion shoe for the retail cost. A use case perhaps not all runners need. I think if you're just doing 5 or 10Ks, well, it's not really much use for it. If you're doing some half marathon or marathon training, then it could be an ideal shoe to add to your rotation. Comfortable, almost plush like upper, with no unnecessary overlays or fireworks. They've just left off all these details that you don't need. See? No pull tab. Just don't need it. A quite simple midsole setup when you think about it, which gives a sensible and stable ride to the runner and is ideal for easy recoveries or longer, slower runs. Great grippy outsole, even in wet conditions. As such, if you're looking for that type of shoe, it's hard not to recommend the Magnify. You want to expand your distance efforts, maybe, or enlarge your shoe rotation without breaking the bank. Now everyone needs to shell out £145 for some overhyped carbon plate shoe with old technology. React foam, brick, terrible arch fit. Sorry, I was just reminiscing about the Zoom Fly 4. Some companies are just being left behind with their use of EVA. Year on year, the same old thing. Puma, fortunately, is not one of them. Still utilizing it, but in a really sensible application. Bit of a value banger, this one, if you're after this type of shoe. It's not gonna be for everybody. I'm gonna give it a 2.5 out of three for value after my initial runs. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us a 10.5 out of 12 for the Puma Magnify Nitro after my initial runs. A musical interlude for you. Guys, you know I'm into old school rock and roll from the 1950s, where the whole kind of concept was conceived. That's where some of the absolute gold is. And now we've got access to digital streaming services, then you can find some real gems from the original period. One such thing is Buddy Holly's version of Rip It Up. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking this was made like 
last year or something. The sound quality is still amazing. This sounds like a demo version, yes, but the speed, the energy, the delivery of the track, it's the blueprint really for people like the Ramones. Buddy Holly attacks the song vocally with gusto. The drums are urgent, like a hungry squirrel. It's just the sound of people having a great time, not about crafting a track to make loads of money and get Instagram shares or whatever. This was where they were making it because it felt good to do that. Go and check it out, guys. Buddy Holly's version of Rip It Up. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's review, guys. It's much appreciated. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos for you. It also helps the channel out a massive amount by giving this video a thumbs up like, but also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.